Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I have something that you have probably never seen before. This is the Ketalese Bluetooth speaker. Well, no, this is the case for the Ketalese Bluetooth speaker. But how many Bluetooth speakers have you seen come in a case like this? This is a hard body case. It has protective corners. I, this, <laughs> this, this is all part of the presentation. And that's what you will find with the Ketalese. It's as much of an experience to look at as it is to hear. I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's open the case and reveal the contents. Behold, the Ketalese. As soon as you look at the speaker, you know that it's, <laughs> it's almost intimidating. Black, glass, padded case. It's, what are we dealing with here? I almost don't want to remove it because it feels like I should be wearing white gloves just to touch the Ketalees. It's heavy. Oh. Are you impressed yet? The drivers seem to be suspended in space. The minimalist design, the black machined metal, the glass, enclosure. Uh, where are the buttons? The Ketalese has but one control. The knob. If you long press the knob, it turns the power on or off. If you short press, you play or pause in Bluetooth mode or mute in auxiliary input mode. If you rotate the knob, you turn the volume up or down. There are only two ports in the Ketalese. The first is a power input port. It comes with a power supply and it must be plugged in all the time. There is no internal battery. The second port is a three and a half millimeter auxiliary input port. If you have something plugged into that port, it overrides the Bluetooth settings. Otherwise, the default is Bluetooth. As I was testing, I noticed that there was no sound coming from the left driver. I contacted Ketalese and asked them if they wanted me to review it as is or send me a different one. And they said that it was actually a passive radiator, which I could almost believe, except that the left driver also has wiring. You do not need wiring in a passive radiator. So either they don't know that is broken or they're lying to me <laughs> but they they offered to send me a different one i thought well what's why would i need a different one if this one is working as designed so i declined getting a new Ketalese bluetooth speaker because according to them this is working exactly as it's supposed to this is the left driver I think you can see that there are wires running to it. And look at the enormous magnet on the back of this thing. This does not resemble a passive radiator in any way. However, I'm, maybe it is. Maybe that's how they're using it. Because when you listen to the speaker, it does sound like it is delivering the 40 watts it promises. And if it wasn't a passive radiator, then I would expect to deliver 20 watts to each channel. This is definitely louder than 20 watts. The only difference I can tell in the appearance of the active driver is this copper colored center. This is the active speaker. If you look at the passive speaker, there is no copper color in the middle, but that's the only difference I can find. So, yeah, maybe. Okay, you convinced me. This is a passive radiator, but it is the strangest passive radiator I have ever seen. If you look at the bottom, you will see what I consider to be a normal passive radiator. There's no magnet. There are no wires. It's just a flexible panel that moves with the air. Set that issue aside. What makes these drivers different than what you would find in a normal speaker? It's the material of the diaphragm. 
they use amorphous silicon dioxide, which is essentially engineered glass. Why is that better? I can tell you what I hear, and maybe that'll help you decide. This is awkwardly heavy. I don't know if it's the case or the driver magnets, but this is unusually heavy for a Bluetooth speaker. I tried the DKL one with a wide variety of music. Broadway, big band, classical, dubstep, techno, rock and roll, folk, everything I could think of just to see how this speaker was different. And, well, I found out. I find that most speakers sound decent at low volumes, but as you turn the volume up, the flaws begin to reveal themselves. Normally, it's with the bass. I put the DK01 through my bass torture test, and even at full volume, I did not get any distortion. It sounded amazingly thumpy for drivers of this size. Is it going to replace my 15-inch subwoofer? Of course not. But as a standalone speaker, I think you'll be very happy. I have to admit, when I first tried the DK01, I did not like it. But after listening to a wide variety of music at various volume levels, I began to understand that the problem was likely my ears. These amorphous silicon dioxide drivers are capable of reproducing high frequencies that are beyond my comfort level. And that's a, that's, that's a problem with, with me. But you probably don't have that problem. And the way I deal with it is to turn the volume down or use an equalizer to shape the sound to something more pleasant to my ears. But it's not a problem with the speaker. I'm just going to come out and say it. The Kettleese DK01 is expensive. And I don't know if people with this kind of budget normally just buy speakers for looks, because this does look amazing. Almost defies logic in that you, can, you can't see the wires unless you look for them really closely. Or if they buy speakers for the sound, because this really has a no compromise sound. It sounds good with every kind of music at every volume level, and it, it there's no there's no distortion. It is not going to replace a room full of separates, but for a small speaker, yeah, it's pretty awesome. For sheer audacity, for capability, for presentation, the Kettleese DK01 is a five out of five. But if you have old man ears like me, you'll probably want to use an equalizer. Thanks for stopping by.